Well, hello, friends. It's Jewel here. Welcome to another Tuesday night live stream. Super duper excited to have you with me. So we are talking about something really important tonight. I want to be able to make sure that your resume is set up the right way because your resume is going to absolutely be key to you getting the position. Now, if you can see me and hear me fine, you can go ahead and give me some likes and loves. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments. Feel free to make some comments. If you want help with your resume, type resume in the comments so that I know you're excited about what I am going to share. Now, why am I talking about this in the first place? You know, your resume is not the most important thing, but it is the first thing. I mean, you can't conduct any kind of job search really without a resume. I mean, this is your fundamental tool. So it's critically, critically important. You have to have a presence and you have to have a story. And that story comes in the form of what's on your resume, what's in your LinkedIn profile. And you also need to have a through line when it comes to your story. And what I mean by that is your story can't just be what's written on the actual resume. It has to be indicated on LinkedIn. You have to talk about it on the phone. You have to tell the same story in your interview. You have to use some of the pillars of your story in your salary negotiations, right? Salary negotiations aren't something that happen where you're asking for more money because you want more money, because you have a mortgage, because you have kids in college. Um, you know, congratulations. That's literally everybody. Salary negotiations are based on, you know, the facts of what you've done, number one, which is part of your story, and what you can do for the future organization that you're negotiating with that's integral to your story as well. So the story starts on your resume, and it goes all the way through to your salary talks. Now, I just had uh, someone who actually, uh, the person who I quoted um, when I made the post about this live stream, took her resume, got her offer within 30 days. And I think either at the last live or the live before that, I talked about two more people for whom that happened. It was either 30 days or six weeks. But the point was they took the resume and just ran with it and got really wonderful success. So here's what I want to emphasize to you tonight. These stories are not, you know, miracles. It's not once in a lifetime, you know, week in and week out. I'm seeing this happen for my private clients. The point of the lives that I do here with you is to share these tactics and share these strategies. I want you to have very actionable information that you can use so that you can apply it to your resume, so that you can apply it to your job search. If you're actively job searching right now, can you tell me that in the comments? If your job search is on, just write job search in the comments. I want to get a sense of who is actively job searching and who is, you know, maybe passively job searching or just kind of waiting for an opportunity to float into your lap because you may be happily employed right now, but you like to keep your, you know, your ear to the ground for the next opportunity. So if you're actively job searching right now, go ahead and write job search in the comments. If you have questions while I'm talking, you can go ahead and put them into the comments. I will see them. If you uh, end up catching me on replay, you can still put your questions in the comments. I'll still be notified. I will see them. So what I want you to be able to do in order to fast track your hiring process is include three core pillars in your resume. Let's go ahead and talk about what those are right now. And, you know, I suspect that the three core pillars that I talk about may be something different than what you've heard in the past. So the three core pillars are who you are, what you do, and the value that you bring. Who you are, what you do, and the value that you bring. So let's go ahead and break those down for a minute. So number one, who you are. Notice how I'm saying that first, right? That is the most important because who you are is the only unique value that you bring to the table. Only you are you, only you think the way you do, only you have the approach that you do. So we want to talk, you know, pretty extensively about who you are. That's going to be pillar number one is who you are. So what actually goes into who you are? You know, when you're talking about who you are, 
what you want to do is you want to be very, very clear about, you know, your place in the world, your level in the world. And I'm going to go ahead and share a resume so that we can take a look at this while I am talking. Uh, okay, so we're actually going to take a look at Crystal's resume while I'm talking. So when I'm talking about who you are, you'll see that we start right off with corporate learning and development manager. That's who she is in a professional sense. Is she the only one in the world? No, she's not the only one in the world. But what we want to do right off the bat is we want to be very, very clear about who this person is to the reader. They want to know what they are getting, okay? Now, the reason that one of the many reasons why it's important to be crystal, crystal clear is because, you know, I tend to see a mistake on a lot of resumes. And that mistake, to be perfectly honest, has to do with people who write all these cloudy things at the top of their resume, you know, results-oriented professional who's passionate and committed to supporting the team and being detail-oriented as we, you know, com collaborate together to resolve problems. That entire sentence that I said is a sentence that I've seen some version of on somebody's resume week in and week out for the 22 years almost that I've been doing this. And what did I really say? Passionate professional. Okay. What's that mean? You know, that's a whole lot of nothing right off the bat. Who's committed? What are you committed to? You know, we don't really know. You're committed to being detail oriented. Okay. I guess that's nice. You're committed to supporting the team. All right. I also guess that's nice. You're collaborative. That's actually a pretty good part of your approach. But you see that, you know, I've said a bunch of words there that still don't tell me who you are. I see a bunch of words, but I don't see who you are. So let's give the reader really crystal clear, hit the nail on the head, who this lady is. She's a corporate learning and development manager. Great. Now let's talk about what you do. What you do needs to go beyond the job description. Let me say that loud for the people in the back. What you do needs to go beyond the job description. The other thing that I've seen in my 22 years of doing this is I'll get a resume that's, you know, like the before version of the resume, right? Because then what I give you after is the after version after we do our work together. So the before version of the resume quite literally will have the job description as it was written in the online job ad from whenever the person got that job. And I can tell because, you know, it, it speaks in this weird, faraway third person voice. It describes the job and not the person. All right. So when we're talking about what you do, you know, it's, it's what you do. It's not what the job is, it's what you do that's critically, critically important. So here, when we're talking about Crystal, let's take a look at what she does. She's a corporate learning and development manager who conceptualizes strategic learning and development plans and builds engaging, effective, best-in-class solutions that promote professional development and performance. Now, guess what? I bet that doesn't sound like any job description you're going to read online anywhere because it isn't. What you want to do is be bold enough to say, hey, this is what I come in and do. There's a job description and then there's you in the job. Huge, huge difference. We want your resume to the degree that we can make it into a living, breathing document. And guess what? It can't live and breathe if all we're doing is describing, you know, what the job is as opposed to you in the job. Huge, tremendous difference. So I just want you to be keenly aware of that. Boldly say what it is you do, because what it is you do is infinitely more interesting than describing the job. We don't need to know the job of any learning and development manager. That's not it. This isn't the resume for any learning and development manager. This is not, you know, a government description of 
this is what a learning and development manager does. He's responsible for this, this, and this. That's not what this is. This is your living, breathing story. So take advantage of that. Let me also point out something else. When we write, you know, who you are, what you do, and the value you bring, these three pillars that I'm talking about, we do it in the present tense because the present tense indicates action. So when we're talking about what she does, she conceptualizes strategic L&D plans. She's doing that right now. Now, could this pertain to the past? Could she have been laid off a month ago and, you know, she's not doing it, you know, today, this week or right this second? Sure, that could have happened. But we're going to use the resume and we're still going to speak in the present tense because the present tense indicates action. And we all want to know what's happening right now. Something that I want to impress upon you that's very important from the employer's perspective, the employer doesn't care that much about history. History, you know, what difference does that make? The employer cares about what's now and the employer cares about what's next. Those are the two most important concepts that we want to make sure to emphasize. All right, so those are going to be two of the keys that are going to be critically important in positioning your story on your resume so that you are the person who gets that call back, gets that series of interviews, and gets the offer within 30 days. If you want to get hired in 30 days, you can pop that into the comments for me. And I still also want to know who is actively job searching. Let me make sure that I can see the comments because you may be talking to me and I may not even know it. Okay. You want to get hired in 30 days, you can go ahead and pop that into the comments. And if you are with me on what I'm talking about, as far as these first two pillars, who you are and what you do, go ahead and give me some likes and loves so that I know what you're tracking with me so that I know that you understand and embrace what I'm saying. All right. So the third pillar, and I call these pillars, these, these can also be three, uh, the three legs of a, of a three-legged stool. That's another way to think about it. A three-legged stool can't stand up if, if one of the legs is broken. So we talked about who you are. Next is what you do. Third, I want to make sure to talk about the value that you bring to the table. So you can express value in a lot of ways. One of the things that I do want to urge you to do is to be concrete. Your value is not being detail-oriented. Your value is not being results-oriented. Your value is not even problem-solving unless you say what the problems actually are. So another mistake that I tend to see, a lot of people want to emblazon their resume with how good of a problem-solver you are. And what I really want to impress upon you to do is think about what that means and try to ask yourself the next question. So when someone tells me, when I'm in consultation with one of my private clients and they say, you know, one of my greatest assets is people always say I'm a good problem solver. Ask yourself the next question, which is this. Okay, what are the types of problems that you solve? Is there a consistent, repeated theme that comes up? And then answer that question. So the answer may be, you know, um, I really do kind of take on those angry, pissed off, upset clients. And whenever that happens, you know, the top brass seems to want to put that client in my lap to soothe them and listen to them and figure out what's wrong and figure out what resources we're going to put together in order to solve it, you know, by hopefully the next day or 48 hours later. You got to think about themes that come up in your career. If you're always the person who deals with the angry, pissed off clients, and then obviously successfully makes them happy and sells them into, you know, yet the, the next thing, then that's the problem that you solve. So shy away from just the resume words, shy away from, I call it resume ease. It's like legal ease and all those contracts that we, we see every single day. We have a cell phone contract. We have an online banking contract. You know, DocuSign sends us 10 pages about whatever. And we never read that, right? It's all legalese. Well, I have what I call resume ease, which is all these words that people just put in resumes and they don't mean 
nearly as much or carry nearly as much impact as you think. Problem solving is one of those words. Being passionate is one of those words. Being detail oriented is one of those phrases. You got to think about what these things really and truly mean. If you claim to be a problem solver, talk about the actual problems. And I would even challenge you, don't even write the word problem in your resume. Don't write that actual word problem. Talk about what the problem is and talk about how you have the strategy and the expertise to repeatedly solve that problem for the client, for the business, for the company, okay? So we're talking about the value that Crystal brings to the table. We can express value in a lot of ways. So we can talk about her expertise. What she's expert at doing is identifying organizational performance issues, then innovating learning solutions that promote professional growth and build the client base. Okay, so that's a combination of more of what she does and the value that she brings. But the way that we make that statement into value is we say that she's expert at it. We say that she innovates. She innovates learning solutions. That's different than just executing them. She's actually conceptualizing them. She's actually putting them together. And then what's the value that comes from whatever it is she does? Okay. She's innovating the learning solution. She's putting the learning solutions into place. Wonderful. But the value that comes from it is that the learning solutions she put into place are ones that promote professional growth and build the knowledge base. That's going to be exactly what a company wants when they're looking for a learning and development manager. So how else does she add value? Well, she's confident and knowledgeable when consulting with subject matter experts to identify knowledge gaps, formulate learning interventions, and design technical training. So let me just actually point out something about this. The difference between resume ease and literally telling it like it is. Resume ease says, you know, you thrive in a team environment. Resume ease says, you have a very collaborative approach or demeanor. What I challenge you to do, get away from those words and actually say what that collaboration means, what that collaboration looks like. I didn't sit here and call her a collaborative professional. No, what I said is she's confident and knowledgeable when consulting with subject matter experts. Guess what? That does mean that she's collaborative. So that's what I challenge you to do. Get away from those resume ease type of words. Stop hiding behind those words and literally say what it is that you actually do. Literally say what it is as far as the value that you bring to the table. Let's continue talking about her value. So Crystal has broad experience building and leading instructional design teams, as well as providing cross-functional leadership to L&D specialists and subject matter experts. So more value in that she has this broad experience, more value in that she's well-versed in leading teams. And well-versed in leading teams is another piece of resume ease. So we've instead said exactly what it is. She builds and leads instructional design teams. Let me point out something else that's really going to be key in making sure that your resume just stands up and sings has to be the key words. If key words have ever been a problem for you, if you have struggled with how to figure out what your key words need to be, uh, go ahead and pop key words into the comments because I'm going to go ahead and talk about that. Key words are critically important and you have to do them correctly in order for them to have the impact that you want them to have. So once again, no keywords that say things like passionate, team-oriented, results-driven, those aren't your keywords. Your keywords, well, in Crystal's case, are gonna be learning and development, corporate training, performance management. Let me give you a, a great litmus test for how to know what your keywords are. What you wanna ask yourself is this. What is the employer giving me a paycheck to actually come in and do every two weeks, okay? The question is, what is the employer 
giving you a paycheck to actually come in and actually do every two weeks. Well, Crystal's first term here is learning and development. Is that what she is getting a paycheck to come in and do every two weeks? I say that's a yes. Corporate training. Is that what her paycheck every two weeks is actually for? Once again, yes. Is she supposed to be impacting performance management? Is that core to her job? Is that what the employer is cutting a check every two weeks for her to do? Once again, yes. And then it goes down the list. But if we get into a discussion of what I call, I call them faux keywords. I call them imitation keywords. So, you know, it's really easy to kind of zoom in on bad resume keywords and understand the difference between, um, between the resume keywords that actually mean something and the resume keywords that truly do not mean anything. So let's pull up some kind of bad resume keywords because I don't want to keep on telling you the same thing. So, okay. Um, keywords that don't matter, you being a go-getter. Uh, keywords that don't matter, you having synergy. You know, what does that mean? You never say that in a normal sentence when you're talking to, you know, people. Um, keywords that also don't matter. Uh, thriving in a fast-paced environment. Thriving in a fast-paced environment, what does that mean? That just means you can keep up with a nine to five. Okay, well, congratulations. You have to keep up with a nine to five. This is called a job. This is not called lounging around all day from nine to five. You need to do that at home. Uh, results driven is another one. What does this mean? You know, you don't ever say that in a conversation with anybody. You've never said that in a normal sentence at the dinner table. Well, I'm very results driven. So don't all of a sudden put it on your resume. Uh, dependable. Think about the opposite of that. What are you then not dependable? Well, you need to be dependable in order to hold a job. Let's not say these things that are like, okay, well, congratulations for stating the obvious. Self-starter. Self-starter is in every ad. And I know that one of the, the reasons that these words keep on showing up on your resume is because they're in the ad. They are fillers when it comes to an ad as well. That's why I really want to impress upon you. Don't use them as fillers in your resume. You being a self-starter, once again, you've never said that in a normal sentence to anyone. Once again, that's not really what the employer is cutting you a paycheck for every two weeks. He's not paying you to be a self-starter. No, he's paying you to conduct sales management. He's paying you to provide marketing leadership. He's paying you to lead learning and development. He's not really paying you to be a self-starter. He expects you to be a self-starter. He expects you to wake yourself up and come to work every day. Um, you being flexible. Here again, what's that mean? Think about the opposite of that. What, you're inflexible? What, you, you only do things one way? You listen to no one? You take in no additional ideas? So don't fill your resume with these imitation keywords that really, truly, do not mean a whole heck of a lot. So friends, those are the three things that I wanted to go over with you that are truly the pillars when it comes to uh, setting up your resume the right way. And in my estimation, in my professional opinion, the only right way is the way that gets you calls, the way that gets you interviews. And in several cases that I've been talking about, in our live streams over the last few weeks, setting up your resume means in the right way means that the resume is getting you all the way to the offer stage within a cool month. That's what needs to be happening. Friends, if your resume is not working for you the way that you want it to, go ahead and write game plan in the comments below this video. And I'll tell you what I do when I see a game plan request. Uh, I hop on the phone with you for 15 minutes. You can send me your resume beforehand. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that. And we're going to go ahead and see, you know, what is going on with this resume. And I'm going to give you some really concrete ideas and strategies and recommendations regarding why this thing isn't working 
and what needs to happen to get it working for you. If your job search has been going on for more than a few weeks, then let's not stay in that place where you're stuck. You know, job search is, is not, it's not about a wish and a hope. Job search is about moving forward. If what you're doing is not moving you forward a little bit every day and a little bit more every week, then reach out to me. Go ahead and write game plan in the comments and we'll talk about what I recommend for you. I'll take a look at what you have. I'll give you a specific strategy to move forward. And then you can go from there knowing that you have a concrete plan of action to advance in your own career. So important that you take ownership of this. This is your job, your career, and your life. And I'm really happy to help you with it. Okay, gonna go ahead and wrap up tonight's live stream. If you wanna talk to me about your resume, your job search, write game plan in the comments. Either I will reach out to you or my team will reach out to you. I'll be in the group talking, answering questions and whatnot. And I will definitely see you on the next live.